I want to apologize for those that have been waiting about 20 minutes. Technical difficulties with the phone. Hopefully got it worked out. Um, also, I'm going to confess, I'm watching the end of this Oklahoma City-Philadelphia 76er game. Isaiah Joe back in Philadelphia, the team that drafted him. Um, and OKC's okay, up a point with about 45 seconds left. I'm doing a little play-by-play. Play, play Game's on TNT. Uh, but thank you for joining me, Hogville Net YouTube Live, for a second consecutive night. I think we've learned some things since we came on last night, roughly 24 hours ago. We've learned more about Hunter Juracek taking over social media for Hoop Hogs basketball. Uh, it's it's very odd not to see Eric Musselman flood, flooding the zone, Eric P. Musselman flooding the zone with social media. He's been kind of quiet for a while, but now we know more. Muss off to Los Angeles to actually interview with USC. Reporting through the weekend and source information was this guy was not in the top two over there. Uh, and, and people are circling back on that saying, look, that was the case. Something changed yesterday. Uh, it was playing out late in the day. You saw that that interesting video, part of a podcast that Juracek did. Uh, and it came out around 4.30, near close of business time here centrally, uh, here in central time. Um, and then, you know, of course, uh, we learned today that, that Melsman actually will be, quote unquote, interviewing at USC tomorrow. So here's the thing. I reported this earlier on my segment on Drive Time Sports. I do have a source. Uh, the information coming out, this is based on disclosure from, you know, uh, one of the most respected, well-known coaching agencies, coaching represent college basketball coaching representative agencies. That's a mouthful. But, but, but agents who, who, who represent coaches on the college level, for the most part, 80s as well, um, that, that basically this is a situation where he's already been offered the job out there and, and him going out is kind of like ironing out details, uh, dot and I's, cross and T's, maybe a coronation of sorts. Uh, I did talk a little bit about that. I mean, if that's true, if that's true, I mean, you know, it, it could say a lot about where, where Hunter Juracek was and, 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 you know, coming out with what, you know, what was released yesterday on April Fool's Day of all days. Uh, and we talked about some of that last night, but I think the important thing there to remember is if Hunter Juracek felt like he was getting information in real time to say some of the things he did, effectively Muss is our coach right now, but maybe not tomorrow. If, you know, there's been no, uh, you know, there's been no raise or extension on the table. You know, those are things where maybe he sees the writing on the wall. And from everything I've heard for a while, uh, I, you know, there really, there was really not an extension or a raise in play from us. And, and your check cleared that up. But I think the other part of that is, could it circle back to something like that? And uh, I think if he understands that, that, you know, Muss is about to take another job, maybe he wanted to get out in front of some things in his own, you know, idea of what, what might be good optics. I don't know that I agree with those. I talked about that last night. But here's the thing. Maybe Eric mulsman has gone now. Maybe USC is where he lands. We've talked a lot about it. At some point, you got to think a guy trying as hard as he was. I stand by that. I think it's obvious now to get out and find a job. Uh, there'd be there'd be one that would, that would settle on him, and that would be the play. Uh, so it looks like it's heading that way. Until it's done, we don't know. Things can blow up at the last minute. That stuff has happened. You know, uh, some of the search firm stuff wasn't that pristine for him with some other jobs he wanted. Uh, and so we'll see what happens there. But I want to talk about several things because, you know, one of the things is we can go back to the optics of the video stuff. You, you can agree to disagree on that. I, you know, I still think it's odd, strange, but it may not be that odd, uh, if a guy like Hunter Yurchek has his ducks in a row, saw this coming, been planning for weeks. You know, I've been reporting for weeks. The guy's trying to get out. You think Hunter Yurchek doesn't know that? You know, and I'm told he's got a plan. He may have a coach in the wings. You know, someone asked me last night, I'm going to drop some stuff here. Somebody asked me last night, Kevin, is any of your source information coming with Trilly Donovan? And to the point that I had talked in that segment last night, I kind of smiled and I answered, Nothing I've talked about uh, tonight so far, uh, that would that be applicable? But I have been talking with him. People know who Trilly is. He gets a lot of stuff right. He misses on some stuff, but he's one of those guys that's always working this, this rumor stuff, coaching carousel. He's not been one of my sources. However, we did start talking last week a little bit. 
Um, and one of the things was we were both feeling each other out about what we were hearing your check had lined up. And I wanted him to give me his list first, so I gave him mine. Um, and um, I put question marks with each one to see, is this what you're also hearing? And in order, I went Chris Beard, Jerome Tang, Will Wade. And he didn't give me his. He just gave me a, 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 a gift that basically, or Jeff, whatever you call it, one back that just said perhaps. So either, you know, he's got the same list or he's got a name on that list or maybe it's somebody else. I don't know. He didn't confirm it. But that all went down on Friday. We were sliding to each other's DMs. Um, and so that's the, those are the names I gave him. Those are the names I continue to hear. Um, you know, trying to get solid you know, information on whether or not Chris Beard, who we know not that long ago, agreed to an extension with Ole Miss, did he sign it? I've heard different numbers on his buyout, um, and I haven't been able to exactly pin that down. Three, four, upwards of, you know, close to five million. I've heard different things on that. So we'll need to see that would obviously impact, that could impact whether or not he would be in play. But I would think it would start with him. This is would be a home run hire an elite coach, if you don't consider him elite, he's close to it. Uh, you could art, make a case that you go from a really good coach to a potentially great coach, an upgrade. You can make that case. Um, you know, there's other ways to look at it, but that'd be one way to look at it. And so we'll see what happens. I think it'd be very hard and difficult and awkward for Eric Mussman to wind up back at Arkansas. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't see a pathway based on everything we're getting now that that's realistic. Um, you know, I don't see a pathway that that seems realistic, especially the way Hunter Yurichik played things. And I think maybe that had a lot to do with he sees the writing on the wall and what seems inevitable. Uh, and I think, and, and don't take that to me, well, they really want him to stay and now they're just kind of giving up and he's trying to beat him to the punch and maybe, uh, you know, be preemptive here. I, I think it may be more about, we're not going to keep, we're not going to try to keep the door closed on you probably a good idea for you to, for, you know, for you to move on. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're basically acknowledging that we have plans too. That could be part of what was going on there. So there's multiple ways to look at it. There's multiple awkwardness playing into it. Um, Sixers win 108, 105. I'm going to turn that off now. It's distracting me. I keep glancing away. Sorry about that. I honestly did have some technical issues with the phone, but I was also kind of paying attention to that. Um, so, you know, there's more than one way to look at it. I think the biggest thing is now how do you move on? I don't think, I don't see a, 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 a you know, a safe return. When I say safe, I'm not talking about actual violence. I don't see a, a copacetic return. I don't see a, a an opportunity here for things to be, um, you know, for things to resolve in a way where you move on with an Eric Mussman, Hunter Yurichek. And I mean, I guess it's possible, but I think something would have to blow up at this point with the USC gig. Those things can happen. Again, Muss, Muss has got some stuff, man. Talked some about it last night. Talked about it on Hogville's message board more at length today. You know, when you talk about a coach and one that has really been an A-plus game on social media, we can start talking about the difference between a persona and a person. Persona and person. Well, that's going to be key later on. I'm going to talk more about that. I don't know if I will tonight. Let's see what happens with Musk. Let's see when, he, when and how he moves on. Someone's asking about Keith Smart. No, I, I think Arkansas is going to look for a proven coach. USC, I was told, is looking for a sitting head coach. Arkansas is going to move in that direction. The program's got too much history not to go to go strong at it. Um, Beard, Beard's a guy that makes a lot of sense. Jerome Tang, in a lot of ways, could make good sense as a hire. Will Wade would. These are just three names. I've got five or six more that on some level are in consideration. I'm not going to go through those tonight. There may be some of those being bantied about out elsewhere. I'm keeping a, a zip on that just, just for now. You know, sometimes I need to do that for reasons for my, that my sources ask, and I respect that. But I'm telling you, outside of those three, there's other guys. Um, and, and, and there might be a surprise or two in there, okay? But look, I think Hunter Yurichuk has a plan. I think that would help if, it, if this pans out. Look, there's about to be a dead period in portal recruiting surrounding the Final Four. It starts Thursday the 4th, so day after tomorrow, through the 11th next week. So a week, there's going to be a dead period in recruiting. Arkansas would love, would love, if Eric Mulsman moves on here midweek 
and that gets announced and is a thing, uh, to, to have something in line and move on it pretty quickly. Would love to have a, something done before the end of the dead period. There's not a lot that's going to be accomplished between now and Thursday anyway for anybody. So look at it that way. Look, Mossman's been telling his staff there's nothing to see here. You know, that's, that's I mean, and I've been telling everybody, look, if he gets something that he wants and they're willing to take him, he's been looking hard, he's gone. He's going. I haven't, I haven't wavered on that. But, but I wasn't sure where it was going to land for him. Again, he was not top two in this job not that long ago, just a few days ago. He was not top two for the Arkansas job. He was third at best, maybe seventh. Some people, depends on who you ask. There were a lot of names that were in play. Uh, but, but, you know, let's give him credit and say, give him benefit of the doubt and say he was the third choice. He was the head coach in Arkansas and a damn good one. Uh, I think this could be another third choice. There's some stuff I'm getting. Uh, I've been really trying to work through today. So there, there may be some kind of an interesting, what I would consider almost a conflict of interest play that is wedging him into that situation out there or has. Uh, some of it seems a little bit bizarre to me, um, but these things happen in, 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 in big time college athletics are more, more resembling a pro game. Now uh, this is a West coast guy. Nobody's surprised that this would be one of his, his preferences. Louisville was the first one. There's other ones. Several PAC, former Pac-12 now shipped into other conferences, programs, you know, handful. USC, when I first started talking about this without dropping school names, was not among the, the top two of the ones that he really would prefer. So USC wasn't one of his first preferences when he started talking about West Coast off, but it was among the ones that he would, that he would explore moving on to. Well, the exploration's getting to this point. Let's, let's see how it plays out. It looks to me like this is all but a done deal. Uh, but again, you know, they're talking about it as he's going to interview. Eric Mussman's not getting on a plane to go interview. This level of coach in this kind of situation, he's not in a field of folks interview, going on site to interview. That, that seems a little silly the way that's worded. But there, there may be some little part to this where that's not completely wrong if there's some dot I that needs to be dotted, T that needs to be crossed, or anything that could happen between you know, now and tomorrow that could blow the whole thing up. Sometimes these things do happen in the final hour. hour. But generally speaking, a guy like Muss is not going to interview for a job and, and flying out to interview for a job like that. Uh, so, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see if that's the terminology people want to continue to go with and we'll see what happens with it. But I think it's more than likely done. Okay. But we'll see again. What really is key is if if he if for some reason he doesn't get it, how how on earth does this work out at Arkansas? And again, I think uh, you know if Musman is named, whether that's tomorrow or soon after that, um, you know that we may look a little differently at what Yurichek was doing and consider the fact that he understood this was was, was going to be the end result and was all ready to start trying to move that envelope a little bit. And I think he thinks kind of measuring it out, the fan base will then understand because it was going to happen kind of quickly. Cards are going to, dominoes are going to fall quickly and that fa the fan base would understand it a little bit better. Um, and so, you you know, Chris Beard's a name, Will Wade's a name. I've got, you know, uh, been hearing for a while that that's a, a, a coach that Arkansas would be interested in. Same with Jerome Tang. This is not new information, really. Uh, and it's a chronology that I just gave you. I, I, I owned up to the fact that I was talking to Trilly Donovan for whatever that's worth. And that was the order in the list that I gave him and was trying to milk it out of him. Was he hearing that? And, you know, he gave me nothing, but, but may, uh, perhaps. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I've got my own information. I'm really trying to see, does he have that? Does he have something else? And I got nothing back, uh, but it's okay. I didn't really necessarily expect it, uh, but I wanted to see what kind of response I would get. And I did get one. Uh, look, I, and I've, I've said this for a while, Chris Beard, would love, I mean, Arkansas would be a destination job for him. And, and, and so some of these other things that need, would need to be worked out, like did he sign his extension with a buyout? What exactly is that buyout? Is Arkansas ready to pony up and understand the value and in, in having a, a, a hire that might be considered a move up or at, at worst, I mean, a lateral kind of hire. I think it would be considered a better hire. I mean, it's a guy that's coached in a national title game and has had, had a lot of success uh, everywhere he's been. Now, I know Ole Miss's first season under him didn't turn out like it started, 
Uh, and it, you know, the, it was a team that was projected for a while to be an NCAA tournament team, soft non-conference. But look, you put that aside. This guy can get it done. I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to signal that this will be the guy, but he could be. He could be. And we need to keep an eye on what does a hundred year tech and the people he answers to, what do they consider? How do they measure value for this job right now? Are, are they going to go low ball and go mid major up and comer? I, I just, I just don't think Arkansas where the branding is, what it's been uh, and where must help put, put the name back on the map in certain places. It hadn't been in a while. I just don't think you, 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 you go that direction. I also think you kind of split the, you, you kind of, you know, you kind of, you know, the Bobby Petrino hire, I, you know, I, I don't have any problem with it uh, in football, but, but you know, you, you didn't necessarily address all the issues with what people perceive as a problem with your head coaching position. I think you got to win this basketball hire because basketball matters at Arkansas, it always has. It's got a heightened sense of interest with the fan base because of recent results, albeit a bad year this year. I think you still try to spark what's there and, and, and go after, you know, you might get, you're going to get, you would have opportunities to get some of these other guys a little cheaper than you would a Chris Beard. That's for sure. What are their buyouts? How easy is that to get done? You know, those are things you look at and you start saying, okay, how do you measure the value? What, what, what do you think you can make work? How much of a gamble are you taking? And so uh, I think Chris Beard is a guy that you, you look at as a coach and I don't think there's a lot of gamble there, but I think there might be some dollar signs that it's going to take. How will NIL play into this? It's going to be big. I told you guys this. If there's going to be a hire, a new hire, it was going to impact that. Arkansas had issues there. There's been troubles there. Hunter Yurchek is better. He, he better be circling up the, the posse and getting everybody on board with what it's going to take. He's got to, he's got to do that, man. That That's going to impact this stuff. Not just how much money you can pay them. How can you help them have success here? You got to do that. You know? Uh, and so, you know, we, we can talk about some of these names a little bit more. We will. But I want to talk about how it impacts a lot of things. You know, Arkansas has got a commitment out of the portal. Not a lot of, you know, not a lot to really put into that. I can tell you that I've been contacted again today. <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've heard from one of the silent commits, you know, talking about how the staff reached out to him last night and asked him not to decommit. I think that's very interesting. It, it leans me toward... It, it, you know, is EPM hedging his bets about, you know, feeling solid about <laughs> this hire? I don't know what it means. Maybe they just, you know, don't want, you know, th this has never been announced publicly, this commit uh, that's, that's, that's off the, that's off the radar. So I don't know why they would be concerned about something like that, but that was, that was the message he got last night. You know, today he's looking at it going, you know, I guess the reporting out there was accurate you know, that this was, could be a thing. And I'm like, yeah, you know, so, there, you know, this is why you want to have your ducks in a row and be able to hopefully, you don't want to rush into a hire if it's not a good fit, because in the long term, you're going to pay for that. But if you've known for, this is the thing about, my, there's no creeping in the night about this. This shit's been going on for months. And I know if I've known about it, reported on it, that Hunter Juracek does. And so, and I've heard for a while, he's got, he's got a plan. He's got a short list. I've heard even lately uh, there's a coach and a staff on board and waiting in the wings. Uh, you know, I don't know how how true that part is. I know sometimes we hear these things and then it's, it doesn't quite play out like we thought it would and uh, other stuff complicates things. And so, you know, we just need to see. But I do feel good about that list of names and some other ones around those. Uh, Yeah, and I mean, I I do think, um, you know, I think um, I think when we talk about a, a silent committed player and what he's here, what's going through, I start thinking about five Razorbacks who went in the portal. We know Joseph Pinion's gone; he's off to a state. I think there's a couple of names, and I'm going to talk about them: Devonte Devo Davis. I don't think he he's a guy that he and his camp to this point have really thought about. You know, if there is a coaching change, what if would there be a dynamic that would impact a, a thought process to maybe consider a return? Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure right now uh, that, that those conversations, from what I'm told, have not really been deep about that. However, some of the schools and coaches that are recruiting him 
are co- are some of the names I mentioned as possibilities for this for for this job. And so you got to think that there'd be a discussion there and maybe some kind of consideration. It's one of the great players in the program history. You know, this past year didn't measure up to that. We know back to back seasons there was departures, uh, but a lot of that was dynamics with uh, EPM. And so, we, we, you know, how would that? Now, another player I think Arkansas fans would obviously be interested in is Layden Blocker, the freshman from Central Arkansas. And my thinking is, the way I see this is, it's been really, really quiet since he's been on the portal. And I'm thinking, my thoughts here, that maybe he's just hanging around for now to see what happens with, the, with, with what goes on at Arkansas. Remember, I'm getting it from a ton of sources for a long time that, that EPM is looking to go. It's out there and, and people are talking and, and some of these families hear stuff. So I'm speculating, but I think there's a possibility that a guy like a Layden Blocker is hanging out to see what happens. And, and maybe he's waiting until after this debt period, maybe, uh, to consider where he's going to visit. What if Arkansas has a hire, has some momentum on something? Uh, what if it's some of these programs he was already talking to, like I just mentioned with Devo, that were considering, you know, recruiting him uh, and getting a visit out of him and trying to bring him onto their campus. He's a guy that I, I, I believe wants to stick with the high major route. Okay, so I, I think we, I think we hear so many interesting angles to this. There's so many interesting angles to this. Uh, last night I was talking about how some of the search firms have really been banging on Mus and and dragging his name through the mud on some other uh, job opportunities that didn't pan out for him, that hurt him, you know, uh, doesn't look like that's going to be a, the, the, the main course of, or main, the main course on the menu for what's going on and what's being considered at USC. Uh, you know, again, let's see what happens there. We, we don't have any official announcement that he's been hired, uh, but I think that's more than likely coming, um, but we'll see. But having said that, you, you know, w- when you start talking about, burning through assistant coaches and you start talking about wear and tear on the players and how he, you know, try to understand p- part of why Musselman blows up rosters every year and starts over, uh, you know, is because I, I think he understands he, he wears on people and players and he's wanting to get the most out of them. I think there's some, there's been some self actual actualization there for, for him, even though he <laughs> maybe hasn't changed it. And been able to correct it. I mean, he is who he is, but I think he sees that. I think part of his roster deconstruction and rebuilds each year is that's part of it. It's not something we talked about. I'm not going to be a disruptor and throw a ton of crap out there, uh, stuff that, you know, I may or may not have had discussions with him about, you know. So there's that. So maybe maybe there's some some guys in the portal, one or two, maybe that would. You know, take another look at it if Arkansas has a, a positive direction and fairly soon, you know. But, you're again, you're not going to make a hire for a few, you know, one or two committed portal guys right now and the possibility of bringing guys back. You're not going to need jerk just for those things. What I'm saying is if Hunter Juracek has a plan and maybe, if anything, these videos the last couple of days, you know, the last few days is his, is his way – of letting us know, don't worry, here's where we are with this guy, and I'm bold enough to come out with this because I got a plan. I mean, maybe that's how it will look if things move along quickly. And if they move along quickly, you hope it's not a knee-jerk hire and that it is a good plan and one that makes sense. And then some of these other things I just talked about with, you know, uh, guys already, look, you know, interested in Arkansas, the portal may be committed, but especially guys that have already been in the program that might consider staying in a return who knows? Those things are important. But I think it's always interesting when I'm hearing from players, you know, uh, you know, p- p- parents, players, recruits, uh, these things happen. These things happen. And, um, you know, right now there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of, you know, I mean, think about talking to a recruit who's, who's committed to EPM over a week ago. And they've asked him to hang out. It's not uncommon for for EPM to kind of stack a couple or three guys, and he likes the he loves the control of optics and staggering. You know, here's a commit, 
Here's a guy going in the portal. Here's commit. And he always tries to get, this was different. You already had five guys in the portal. You've already, you know, kind of, you know, just get, you recently got your first commit. You didn't have to do it that way for that reason. And it's starting to become more clear to me. Things were moving in another direction for him. And he's put a, put the brakes on some of this stuff. Now the messaging that, that the player is getting is, hold on. Just hold on right now. That's tough. That's tough because the longer a player holds, other opportunities are passing them by. Uh, that's a tough one. And so you hope if, if whatever happens, and, and again, let's get back to how awkward is it going to be if, if for some reason the USC, USC thing blows up? Or is this a marriage that now, I mean, I, I think there's too much out there. Uh, you know, it's almost one of those things, how do you go back? How do you, how do you, how do you live in the same house anymore? How does that work? I mean, I can't 100% rule out that they'd try to awkward. I mean, he's got a $7 million buyout if, if Arkansas were to fire EPM. It's a lot of money. You know, how, how do you... Here, let me get to some of the comments. I've got more to say here. We're not going to go an hour and a half tonight. Given the situation, if Musk somehow gets the USC, I mean, you know, to me, you got to move on. If he does not get UCA, how can your check not fire him? There's no way Musk can come back. That's, I mean, really, I'll never say 100% absolutes typically. So I won't say there's no way, but it's as close to no way as you could. I mean, how, how does that work? How, how, how do you, you know, how do you share this? I mean, this is going to be War of the Roses. Anybody remember that movie? You young kids need to watch it if you haven't. And you old farts, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. War of the Roses is what that shit will look like. That's tough. That's not going to work. So where do you go? How do you, how, I mean, I think he's gone. I think that's probably how this gets announced pretty quickly. And I think, I think, I think Hunter, your check does too. And I think that's probably why we saw what we saw um, through, through his messaging. I think the original video you know, I don't think that was part and pa par part and parcel of the full body of, of of like here's book in one, here's the other book in. I think that one was a little bit more. You know, is this thing moving to where it looks like it could be? I think the one on Monday was basically him and saying, okay, that's where it's going. You know, and and listen, everything that's been going on behind those doors for for longer than just even this year, but especially this year. I don't think there are any teary, bleary eyes about this. And I don't think anybody's trying to keep that door closed and, and hold somebody back. And, um, you know, you have a losing season. You weren't going to, you didn't deserve a raise or an extension. That only would work as if for any reason the university felt any insecurity about what their prospects would be and maybe want to figure out a way to get through another year or something like that. I uh, brought that up as a possibility, but I said it was not likely. And Hunter Yurchek said, no, that's, that isn't likely. It's not what we're putting out there. He doesn't have more money. He doesn't have an extension. Uh, there's not any of that. So, yeah, point of no return, that's what it looks like to me. All right? So we've, we've talked about the likelihood that now Musk is going to be off to USC. I, I, you know, we'll see. You know, could it blow up on him? Sure. You know, this is another situation where he was not the top choice. But sometimes things work out. It did here. All right, so we're kind of repeating some of that. We've talked about guys in the portal from Arkansas. We've talked about some of the portal stuff of guys they were recruiting. Look, I acknowledge they were, they were working hard, doing the due diligence. Musk is telling his staff, we're going to work. I'm not, and, and then you, you continue to hear this guy's really cranking it out and really trying to get gone. SMU came up a couple of weeks ago. He was not tops on that list. The more source information I get is that, and I mentioned it last night, I've, I put a vague little thing in about, Maybe that was starting to move a little bit in his direction. And I, what I'm told is he got wind of that, that, that he was in play and so was infield at USC. And, and, and EPM <laughs> shifted down and got out of the way and, and, and made a play on the, on the place that he would rather be. And I told you, I've been reporting for a while. Some of these jobs, SMU would be one. But I didn't have a lot of sore stuff for a long time on that. kind of came in real time when it was happening. And then some, even after he moved on from that, uh, but, but some of the other jobs, there were some mid majors in there 
And there were some, you know, one of them that is tied to UC, USC, potentially, Dutcher at San Diego State. San Diego State is one of the mid-majors EPM was asking about, inquiring about, and showing some interest in a while back. And that, again, comes into how did dominoes fall? W would that be an opening that comes up if a job he's trying to get and compete with a guy like Dutcher moves on, and then that would be a spot? We know he likes San Diego. We know San, San Diego State was the hated rival, and there's been some stuff there. But coaches get over stuff like that if, if you know if they can get back to a per preferred area and other things that matter to them, and that's a strong program. Uh, you know, so money, you know, if you say, well, it just makes no sense. He makes over four million in Arkansas. Look, again, there's a lot of bad stuff, but bad toxic stuff behind the doors up there. Uh, we saw a really bad season. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's just been a lot of negative stuff, and so sometimes you got to recalibrate what your off ramps need to be, right? So that there's, you know, I'm giving you a little bit more tonight. Uh, you know, I've acknowledged some stuff that. You know, put out some names. P is for Patrick. That is correct. Eric P. Musselman. Eric Patrick Musselman. That's his name. You know? Um, we'll screw up this hire somehow. Well, that's possible. Um, Arkansas's, you know. I mean, I look at the list. You know, Kelvin Sampson was number one on the list. That guy is an elite coach. It's a great coach. You know, that didn't happen. Greg Marshall, thank goodness that didn't happen. Eric Melsman has worked out for Arkansas. <laughs> this was always War of the Roses. It was a great, great comparison. Okay. Uh, look, <laughs> Eric melsman has been a great coach at Arkansas. He's, he's helped rebrand it to the brand you knew about if you lived back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, late 70s, 80s and 90s. I mean, uh, with Eddie Sutton and Nolan Richardson, if you didn't live through it, you've grown up being a Razorback fan and you know about it. You've studied it. You've researched it. You've gone back and watched archived, archived footage. You know what this program was, and Eric Mussman helped restore some of that. Great hire. Third choice, great hire. Sometimes things work out that way. Arkansas hasn't always had the best luck with hires. In basketball, you, you know, when you go back to Dana Altman for, an, for a sleepover and an awkward hog call, Stan Heath and John Pelfrey, that was, that was just an ugly run. Eddie Sutton was a great hire. Nolan Richardson was the greatest hire. Mike Anderson was a really good hire. It's what Arkansas needed at the time. And he went, took it from a dumpster fire to respectability. And he handed something off to Muss that he could work with immediately and build on. And it wasn't a complete shit show, toxic culture. Eric Mussman has done a lot. This past year was awful. And there is toxicity within the culture. He was able to overcome that. Eric Patrick Mussman, EPM, was able to overcome that in previous seasons where when you looked at the results and you looked at the messaging and you looked at the social social media and you're a fan, you're like, wow, those things are real. Your perception is real because it's what you know and they're winning and they're recruiting well and there's some, that, that was all real, but there was other, under the belly, there was a lot of stuff. And folks can pick now and say, well, it's convenient to talk about that now. Yeah, you, you think media folks are running out to, to throw that shit around when the program's thriving and doing well, even if there's some major stuff going on? Yeah, I've kind of hit a nerve here. I've kind of brought up some stuff, and you're going to say, well, you're going to be more than just vague? I mean, how 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 injury situations were handled? Internally, messaging to the public, uh, communication stuff, how they were going to actually manage it, a lot of that stuff were points of contention throughout. That's just one example, you know? Relationships with assistant coaches, burning through assistant coaches. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna say it. Effectively, two staffs. Guys that EPM brought with him from Nevada. It's not that they're bad guys, but they're his guys. And he had other guys that he hired. Um, and, and I don't think, based on, and, and not everybody's going to come out in the public. None of these guys can say and, and acknowledge this publicly. They're always going to say positive things with a smile, anything that makes public consumption. I'm telling you that, that you know, 
There's a difference between pers persona and person. There, there's a lot of stuff when you looked at guys he brought in as part of his staff that, you know, on many levels was very dysfunctional. It was almost like two staffs operating, an echo chamber in one part of it. That will catch up to you. Sometimes you need good cops in the house that know what the hell they're doing, and have been around the block too. They may not be an X's and O genius like you are or some other things, but they bring valid stuff to the table, and eventually that shit catches up to you. I'm dropping some specifics. I'm not giving you exact names, and I promise you nobody will go on the record to talk about this. They can't. It would hurt their careers. They can't do it. They're always going to say the right stuff, and they're always going to smile. I mean, you know, they, there are a couple of books in me, more than one, a couple, you know, so I, I'm not saying I'm going to write a book. I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff there. And there's a lot that a lot of folks won't talk about. These are based on my observations, stuff that got back to me constantly in real time, real conversations. All right. Somebody mentioned Clay Moser's name. And, you know, Moser's a guy that was with Musselman for a long time before he brought him on in that first group of coaches that was hired. Uh, you saw guys starting to hit the door pretty fast. Who, who amongst these assistant coaches got promoted? Who, who, which of these guys went on to bigger and better things? Look, no, no disrespect to guys that are out there banging and doing a great job. The point was <laughs> they were ready to go, man. They were ready to go at any cost. That's real. That's what's real. It's tough, man. It's tough to, it's hard because for a lot of folks, this stuff is hitting them like a freight train. Please write a book. <laughs> I mean, look, Gus, someone brings up Gus's name. Gus is, he's having a hell of a, one of the nicest guys ever. One of the nicest guys ever. I'll never forget one of the first things he said to me. It hit me out of the blue um, and it's, it, it's related to the very stuff I'm talking about in a sense. And I'm thought, well, that's a weird way to start a conversation with, with a smile, but he was making apologies for somebody. Making apologies for him, making assumptions that I'd already been through the experience. I'd already been through that car wash. It was interesting. There is a book. I, I'm saying some stuff tonight, aren't I? But I've been telling you folks for a while that, that this guy was looking. Um, hard looking. I was trying to get you away from the idea of, well, don't all coaches do that? Aren't they just looking at what their opportunities are? are they Don't they use it for leverage? That happens a lot. Yes, that does happen a lot. Sure. It was too much coming in and too many that, that he's really, he wants to go. You know, and, and that's been the case going back to year two. It's been the case going back to year two. It's different this year. It was it was saturated. It was all over the place early in the season or before the season, depending on who, who talks about it. And it was, you know, it was it was pretty canvassed and spread out. You know, casting a wide net and recruiting. He was casting the wide net, trying to be recruited. Bam. It's all based on source information. I wasn't in the room for, for this stuff. It's based on really solid source information. So I, I take it to, you know, to heart and I take it as near certainty that that's been going on. And I told you, if, if any of these opportunities that he prefers or putting feelers out about that he really would leave for, if they came and met him on the same page, yeah, come on, that he would take that. It would not then become, okay, I want to stay at Arkansas. I'm going to use it. No, never talk like that. I said the only way that leverage would happen is if it by default he couldn't quite get out and he wants to save face and he wants to get something out of it and he's trying to, you know, and maybe at some point your check doesn't want to go. Your check answered that for us. That was an answer in the last few days. No, that's not going to happen. And in my reporting, I said, a couple of sources told me it's not likely they would, Arkansas's athletic department side of it, Eurocheck would go down the road of extension raise or something, something like that. 
but I didn't close the door on it because I know this stuff gets weird and can be stressful. But Arkansas may be in a position right now with a strong hand. I don't know that for a fact. I'm hearing that, that it got a plan. We'll see. But if, if, if they do, it helps explain your checks. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get an explanation that'll satisfy us. Satisfy us. I mean, the, the video was odd. It didn't come across as ballsy in, in, in Captain America. Some people thought it did. Uh, the thing with us, you know, I mean, he's got he's got reasons for what he's done, I'm sure. I don't exactly know what they are. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things that I talked about, thank you for the comment, must seem checked out. Uh, was how does it, how how does something like that impact you, you, what you're doing, and how you're conveying your that you're locked in and that you're you're you know as the as the leader of your program uh, that you're trying to have another run and you're four of let's you know <laughs> let's burn a path back to that second weekend in March and see if we can go even further than that. You know how did how does something like this impact that? You know. There are two big names surrounding this situation that are at the front and center of conversation, EPM and Hunter Urochek, two big names. And I can tell you that when I had a conversation with one of those folks about stuff I'd been putting out and reporting, I'm not going to tell you exactly what was said. I just didn't get great pushback. It was not a major point of contention. Uh, you know, th th there, weren't <laughs> there weren't any strong denials. Um, you know, so we're covering some stuff we talked about last night. I've gone deeper with some stuff, giving you a little bit more. We've talked about potential coaching hires. We're about 42 minutes in. Uh, so we're not going to go an hour and a half. In fact, I might wrap it up pretty soon. I'm going to read some of these questions, see if there's something people want to talk about that can't. Can you talk about Grant Nelson's recruitment? Yeah. I mean, Arkansas, you know, Arkansas was trying to find a way they, Eric, EPM and his staff made space by pushing some kids into the portal. Um, you know, there, when it was coming down to trying to get, um, trying to get Ron Holland, who was really looking to stay in college. I mean, you don't, you don't need a release from your, uh, from your letter of intent, uh, to go to the G league ignite. You didn't need that. And he was trying to angle gumming. Um, you know, you know, I've reported that on multiple occasions, he was making signaling that, that Arkansas was where he wanted to be getting out of Texas. That didn't happen. Grant Nelson was another one they felt really good about. Arkansas did get a visit right after Alabama. At the beginning of that visit, it was it was it, you know it was from the staff. The idea was this guy had really already made his decision, still coming on the visit, and they were it was awkward. All right, um, and 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 there was some information sharing going on about what I was learning about the Alabama visit. You know, sharing uh, with the staff and and and. There's just so many things, folks, that that are are, are, are fun little goodies, fun little goodies. Uh, but it didn't work out, and so you had to play on those guys. There was some outside hope. I think EPM had convinced himself maybe there was some way to get Jordan Walls back. Uh, I didn't see that as a viable thing that would happen, but maybe you never know. Maybe I just didn't think that was going to happen. Not from what I was hearing, that didn't happen. Um, and so those were things that I think. Uh, you know, I think some of the NIL stuff and some of the cloudy stuff about that, you know, started kind of seeping through around that time. Um, and I think Arkansas tried to get it, you know, get some of that corrected in some of those recruiting moments and it was just too late. And then it's just been continu con a continual problem based on what I've been told from people that are directly impacted by it. So without a ton of specifics on dollar amounts, I got some dollar amounts, but more of it's just in general, it's an issue. It's not what's being, you know, it's not what it was. But here's the thing about that. You know, I've heard some other schools that are making promises on NIL or what it will look like or, you know, what it's going to be like. And some of those haven't lived up either. So that may not just be at Arkansas, but from another perspective, I was told it's the second worst in the SEC next to Vanderbilt. That was a, that was something that I got in early February. 
Um, Yeah, someone's asked me, are the hunts having a beef with my, I'm not going to get into that. Um, you know, there's been some friction throughout uh, different parts of powers that be that have con that are connected and, and matter. I'll, I'll put it that way. Recruiting in Central Arkansas looks great. There's, there are outstanding players in Central Arkansas. As always, there are outstanding players throughout the state, including Northwest Arkansas. Some studs up there, high major guys around the state, a lot in Central Arkansas. And believe me, believe me, these young men are going to, whether it's EPM, Eric Patrick Melsman, uh, or whoever it is moving on, uh, they're, they're, they, they should be coveted and they'll be made a priority. You know, I do think there's some, you know, from, you know, and look, I haven't talked a lot about this. There, there's some, uh, there's some skepticism around the state. Uh, when you start talking about in-state guys and, and how some of that stuff has played out in recent years. And so it's always one of those loaded guns, you know, two sides to it thing where uh, when you go after in-state kids, uh, there are going to be some expectations that they get opportunities, but you're, the main goal is to win however you do it. If you can recruit on a national level, I mean, guy like Nolan Richardson, uh, you know, didn't always, wasn't always loaded with Arkansas kids, but it wasn't the same back then either in terms of the quality uh, of, of talent in the state like it is now. And he had a hotbed in Memphis, which is, you know, our, our, the state of Arkansas, even central Arkansas is often comparable, sometimes better even than Memphis. That's just some things that have shifted over time. Um, but I think EPM has had uh, some very, uh, has, you know, has lost ground in, gener you know, generically speaking, I mean, I've got some individual stuff on this. I'm not going to get into that. So if I clump it all together, uh, you know, just in general, I think he's lost some ground with, with some of the in-state stuff. That doesn't mean that there aren't in-state kids that would still play for him and go to Arkansas. Uh, so I'm not saying that. Um, but, I, but I think it became a tougher chore based on, you know, recruiting and how things played out with players on the roster that were in-state. I think a lot of that stuff became tenuous. Uh, over the last couple of years, right? And so there's a lot I could say. There's just so much I could say about it going all the way back to year one, all the way back to year one. It's, some of this stuff fascinates me, the mind of a genius, I guess. is genius. Um, yeah, so what? Where, what, what, where does Hunter Yurichek go next? You know, he, he's also in wait and see mode with, with probably an announcement that Musk will be the next coach at USC. It's probably where that's headed. And, and so now you're just, your, your turn comes after that. There may be a domino or two out there uh, that, that could make things interesting um, in terms of maybe expanding a search. If, if you don't already have a guy truly lined up or ready to make that move really quick. And, and some of those will fall right after the final four, which is, you know, after this weekend, you know, a week from now. So, you know, those are things to always, please call in a drive time tomorrow and, and go. I was on today. My segment was on today and I, you know, I, I, I made sure the record was clear on, you know, what, what reporting was accurate and, you know, uh, some of the other stuff where I was being, uh, you know, chastised or whatever that silliness was a few weeks ago. Look, that's, that stuff doesn't concern me. I've told all of you that, the messaging coming out from behind doors up there until it became on, you know, where, where you're confronted with a departure is always going to be nothing to see here. And it's going to discredit the messenger. And I started to see it seep out through some of the local media folks, folks that don't have basketball connections, folks that only know what they're told in the moment they're told. Now go out there, minion, go out there pawn, and put the word out. And I knew immediately when I started hearing from some of this stuff, hearing some of this stuff from, from some of these in-state guys, I knew exactly whose mouth they were, they were puppets for. I, I could, I know the words I knew, I recognized them immediately. And I was just sitting back and laughing going, okay, you know, you, you go with that. That's all. Cause that's all they got. They don't, they don't, they're not tied to this stuff. 
They're not tied until someone involves them, you know, with their own agenda. That's those are where the agendas are. And I don't blame a lot of these guys. They don't, you know, they they, they don't know. They just know what they know in the moment, what they've been, what's been shared with them. And I told you, I telegraphed it for you. I said, this is coming. Hunter Juracek, the only reason why he is not towing that line now is because of the inevitable. And I always said it, th this stuff will be messaged a certain way if he's going to stay or they want to detract from what might be happening until they have to face it. Because you've got to do that. If he's over there recruiting, that, that's why some of this mess messaging was coming out from EPM is because until he feels certain about it, he's still got to work this job and he's wanting to buy himself some time. He's wanting to get some of the mouthpieces to confuse it and, and get folks thinking, well, you know, maybe this is a bunch of BS. No, just buying time till, till something lands for him. That's real talk, folks. If you're hanging in here over 50 minutes and you didn't get sick of listening to me, you got a little something else there. Anybody he recruits, he's taking with him. I mean, we'll see. You know, Arkansas's got two players that signed in the early November period from the high school ranks. Isaiah Elahim, already on the West Coast here, Canyon, been out there several years. East Coast guy originally, been living out there for a while, playing out there. That kind of would make sense that he'd follow him there. Jalen Shelley, I don't know. Uh, you know, Texas guy, been at Leak Academy here, not far away from Fayetteville. Don't know how that would play out for him. Um, you know, there's other guys I didn't talk about, uh, the four remaining guys on campus, you know, uh, who, who knows if they'd be willing to look and see what else is coming to Arkansas and sticking around and, 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 or if they move on uh, for pro opportunities or just want to transfer or maybe get in the portal and look, you know, go get in the portal, look at other options on the college level, maybe test draft waters, and then maybe also visit other schools and consider a trend. I mean, they're going to have options if, if Arkansas has a coaching change. I'm really talking about it tonight almost as though it's already happened. I want to pump the brakes a little bit and go back to what I have said a couple of times. I'm never 100% absolute on, on these kinds of things. If something blows up on this deal that looks like something that's about to consummate but blows up on it, then what? I just don't see I, – I, I, I don't think that'll happen. I don't think Hunter Juracek measured what he was doing – based on having to deal with that, but who knows? And that tells me that he feels pretty confident that he's going to be making a hire soon. It doesn't give me a direct line of that. It makes more sense to me. Could I be wrong about that? Sure. 70, 30, Muss is leaving? Right. Question mark? Uh, I think it's probably greater than that. I think something would have to blow it up. And because there's been issues and stuff, and because I don't know the folks that are looking at him, what they exactly know and how much vetting they've done, when I go back on the timeline, they've had at least two weeks uh, to, in, in, to, to move him up their, their list of where he was in the pecking order. So either they're overlooking some stuff because of plenty of positives that have been there too. I haven't gone through all of that as much as I have some of the negatives because we already know what the positives are. We've talked about them for three years. Four years. Even this year, when things were blowing up on the court and some of it off the court, I would still remind people of the positives. Got to give him credit for this. So there are plenty of positives about the guy as a hire. Uh, it's just how long is he? You know, how long can you really plan for with him? Did anybody really think coming into this that Musk was going to absolutely fall in love with with Northwest Arkansas and this would be his dream job and stay forever? This guy's been a nomad. He's been a you know, he's been a guy that moves on to new opportunities, different things. We know he's a West Coast guy. There's that. I mean, you, is Fayetteville on a beach anywhere? No. 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 This isn't, you know, this was never, in my opinion, uh, something that was going to be a, a Houston Nut tenure kind of a thing, no matter how good he is and how much success he had. You know? So, I mean, there's all, more than one way to <laughs> write a book one day. That was the same comment circling back up. Yeah, I will cut it to an hour tonight, guys. We're at 54 minutes. Uh, I thought maybe 45, but I've said a little bit more. Saying a lot tonight, actually. I mean, um, 
there's just been a lot of stuff that I think um, where this makes sense for everybody. And, and I wasn't, this time last night, I wasn't sure that Mussman had moved himself up the rung. I brought it up as a possibility with USC. So then I'm going back to Hunter. I'm going, why is he doing these things? And now it's becoming more clear to me because he see, <laughs> he knew before I did that this is, you know, this is probably happening. And so let's say a little bit more on his part, you know? Um, and I think it's more and more telling now. And, but then again, let's see how it plays out. If it's announced tomorrow, um, if it's announced at any point, but I, I do think that there is a, a door closing for EPM in Arkansas. I could be wrong about that, but if something blows up on this tomorrow, someone tell me how that works moving forward. Someone tell me how it works moving forward. I'd like to know. Another, another comment for Chris Beard. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I think that'd be an excellent hire. Um, Back, has Hunter Yurichek back channeled his first choice already? Well, I've heard that. I mean, that's one one source I've got that said he's had got a plan in place and a staff ready to go. Again, as I said earlier, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I 100% buy into that. And part of that is even if he thinks he does, some of these things just certain things get in the way or cramp it. So and and blow it up. And and I think that's happened before here. And so how much were they able to get resolved in the meantime while EPM is out here figuring out where he, where he's going to land? You know, how much, how much of that got worked out again? If you, if you believe my reporting that this has been going on for months, then you've got to believe that Hunter Yurchek's known about it. I'm not, I don't know stuff very, I mean, there are things I know that that affect Arkansas basketball and recruiting that Hunter Yurichek doesn't know. But something like that, no. And so, how much could he have gotten done behind the scenes? Maybe a lot. You know, we're going to see his worth based on how this plays out. We might have opinions about it immediately, of of feeling really good about it, or there may be question marks. And some people will say. Well, because I have question marks and because of some of the other issues we've had with football and now you've lost a very successful coach and you're giving me question marks. I mean, there are already people calling for your checks head or, you know, they're, you know, just, you know, how valid is that stuff in terms of being, you know, either realistic or fair. That's for everybody to decide on their own. I'm just saying he's going to be under a lot of scrutiny here. Uh, but I would not lay this situation at the feet of Hunter Yurchek. I have not talked to him in terms of how to, you know, are there, is there going to be, you know, I'm not messaging for anybody. I'm nobody's puppet. I'm not out here selling something now uh, because of the inevitable that I don't work that way. I bring what I want to bring when I want to bring it. And it's based on the work I do. I don't sit around waiting for people to feed me anything. I, I, I'm not a shill. Get that. Let's, let's get that out there. You're a check kicking ass for Arkansas every sport. <laughs> well, I, you know, and I'm not defending Hunter Yurchek. I will just say, uh, for those that are stargazing on on Musselman's track record here, on Eric Patrick Musselman, uh, there's 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 been some laundry stuff back there that ain't clean, and it, and, and so you know, a lot of that's on him. Why was Mus obsessed with the Alabama job? You know, I don't know. I just know that that, you know, I'm told that's really what he wanted at the time that Nate Oates got it. And he, and Mus ends up, uh, Eric Patrick Musselman ends up at Arkansas, EPM. You must've heard me talk about that on Drive Time Sports earlier. Love your work, Kevin, always can count on you. Well, I don't know. Winning. Yes, winning Travis Creed. That's a name. Moss won it out here too. How do you like that? 
Guys, we're on my, we're there. We're 10 seconds away from an hour. I guess I will shut it down. I'm not going to put anybody through an hour and a half. Some people are probably like, Diotti went an hour, two and a half hours over the last two nights. Thank you for joining me in Hogville Net YouTube Live tonight. I want to thank my sponsors, Jose's Grill, Bar and Grill, excuse me, in Tiny Town, Doug Allen and the folks. I uh, love them. Great folks, great restaurant. Um, and and want to always, you know, encourage people to go check out Jose's there in Tiny Town, Jose's Bar and Grill. And I also want to drop in again, Autograph. Uh, this is one of my latest promotions. It's a great app. Download it. Um, you, know, you, know, you can go to the top of my the top of my Twitter slash X page where I've pinned uh, the promo code ARHS24. And then there's a link. So you click the link, you use the promo code, and download the Autograph app. It's got a lot of your favorite content covering Arkansas Razorback sports. It's easy to set up. It's all free. And I would recommend doing that. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, forever Woo Pick Suey. You nailed it. You, you, oh, well. Don't mind more talking. At least I know. It's all right, folks. I, I've, I've worn it out tonight. We'll have more to talk about. Um, and at some point, I'll be able to share more. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff I think a lot of people would find absolutely fascinating. And I've got to sort through how I parse it out and, and um, share it. Somebody just contributed $10. I have no idea. We've never asked for money on here. David Smith, thank you. I don't know where that goes or how that works, but appreciate that. Yeah, let's let's keep Hogville alive. I mean, I'm, I'm on the Hogville Net YouTube live channel, so we just got a, a I've never seen that before. Um, all right, folks, I am signing off. I, I just said that, and I haven't done it yet. So hope maybe we're back on tomorrow. Maybe we get down like this again uh, and, and do some more. Probably will, because I think we've got to talk about whether or not a, a job was accepted or it didn't happen or what, what blew it up. Uh, but we got a lot out on the table today. Glad to be with you folks. Probably see you tomorrow. Feel pretty certain that'll happen. Uh, but until then, I'll see you then.